everybody, this is Blue and Karen in the woods. Haven't done one of these for a while, so I thought we'd come on and say hello. And we're playing a little game, which I have shared with you before, but you may have uh, forgotten about it, or you might be new to the group. So I thought we'd play it today. And it's called 543. So there's some, oh, it's just so many different wonderful skills involved here for children of all ages and adults. So I'm gonna play the game and you can use your fingers with this as well. So great links to supper tizing and our concept image of five. So five things first that you can see. So this is going to improve your children's ability to be quiet and notice and calm all these lovely self-regulation tools and they can notice anything they want and they've got to name the thing that they see. So great for language, great for sharing ideas if you're out for a walk in a little group. So you can sort of tick off each one as you see it. So I'm going to say blue. I can see blue so that's one thing. Um, I can see some, I might not know what this is called if I'm a child, but I can see that green stuff on the tree. I know that's moss. So moss is going to be my second one. And you could always go back and recap. So I've got blue, I've got moss on the tree. I can see lots of crunchy leaves. So you could model using lovely descriptive language. So we had blue, moss on the tree, sorry, blue, <laughs> moss on the tree, crunchy leaves. Let's look for something different. Oh, there's some plants growing because it's the spring here in Wales. So plants growing, let me go back again. So I've got Oh, something funny happened on my phone there. I've got blue, the moss on the tree, the crunchy leaves, and the new plants growing. Let me see if there's something very different I can find. Either maybe something very big or something very small. I challenge myself. Ooh, lots of things to look at. What takes my interest in particular? Oh, there's lots of things, but a lot of the things are quite similar to what I've spotted already. So I'm going to look at these leaves here because I'm drawn to these because I can subitize the number of leaves as well. Quite similar, but obviously we're in a wood. So that was, <laughs> Blue's crying now. Blue, you were the first one. So Blue, the moss, the crunchy leaves, the plants emerging from the ground, the new plants, and then the subitizing of the leaves there. So that's five things I can see. Now what you do is you go to four things. So think about what you have to do to your hand to make five into four. And you're gonna have your children saying things like, oh, I know it's four because I can see two and two and three and one and so forth. So you do four things that you can hear. So of course we have to be even more quiet now. So I'm gonna listen. And I can hear, oh, death, that was just a bird. So there, so I was always waiting, lots of bird song. So number one's gonna be the bird song, put that one down. So number one, it's gonna be the bird song. I can hear some sort of tractor or vehicle. So that's number two. So I had bird song, tractor, and then when I walk, I can hear my coat bashing against my clothes. Oh. That was a good one, I don't know if you heard that. That blue just did some scraping on the ground, which he likes to do. So we had birdsong, a tractor or a vehicle, my coat brushing against my other clothes when I walk, and blue scraping his feet. So again, you could go back to the five things you saw, you could go to the four, and then we're ready for the three. And the three, you can obviously change these around in whatever way you want, but three is three things you can touch. So again, I'm going to, because Bluesy likes this, I'm gonna stroke Blue. So I can talk about how he feels. So Blue's lovely soft hair. So that's out of my three. How did I make my four into three? So the first one is Bluesy's hair. Oh, I'm gonna go over here, because this looks really interesting. So here, now Blue was really soup. Thanks, Blue. <laughs> Blue is really smooth. This is bumpy and it's bumpy because of these here. I don't know what these are. Maybe I could go and I could take a photograph and go and try and find out on a website. You can do that with your children. So I've got second thing was the bumpy bark. Nice bit of alliteration there. And the third thing, let's have a look. I've, I wonder if I can find anything soft 
because I had soft and smooth with Blue's hair. Then I had lumpy and now I'd say this is soft, but it's soft not in a smooth way, in a way like, like clothes are, like a jumper. It's kind of cosy and woolly. That's really lovely. So that's again the moss on the tree. So my three things were <laughs> Blue's lovely soft hair, the lumps on the bark of the tree and finally the moss on the branch there. So again, think about the fact that you've gone from five to four to three in whatever way you want to show them. You not only ended up with three things, so that's the whole group, for example, in the last one we just done, but you also labelled them as the first thing, the second thing and the third thing. And when you were getting your three, first of all, for example, you had just one, and then you had two, then you had three. So you've got number behaving in different ways here, but very meaningfully. You've got number as, as a whole group that you can instantly see. So there's your perceptual subvertising. You've got the idea of how numbers change and their properties change when you change what the total is. And even a child at the stage of not knowing that's four and five can see that isn't the same amount as that. You've got naming the numbers, five, four, three. You've got some good dextral skills here with your fingers. It's quite hard. You've got the idea of the first thing, the second thing, the third thing, that's ordinal. So all of these skills here, and of course it's about being outside and the most important thing is you're following the children's interests so therefore they are fully engaged this is their agenda this is them making sense of things this is their language and your role is to be a really active listener and model your own answers so you can extend their thinking and you know show them the way the way they might do things when you play it again. That's the way they're going to learn, by being listened to and by having suggestions that are coming from you because you know more and your language skills are, are more well developed and they'll pick up on that. So I hope that's an enjoyable game for you to play in the garden, preferably outside. If you can't go outside still, it's going <laughs> to Blue's just tying me up here, so I have to turn around. But if you can't go outside, of course, you could play it in an apartment. All right, see you soon, everybody, from me and Blue. Bye.